Hi everybody, it's the uh, Patsy here. I'm going to be doing the uh, general energies for 2018 for the sign of Sagittarius. First of all, happy birthday Sagittarius <laughs> and happy birthday Joanne um, and happy birthday to, um, let me see who else, Tracy. Um, happy birthday to all you Sagittarians out there and I'm going to start the doing this reading you guys um and you know i'm doing it on facebook live because uh me and my new pc have, have been having issues with youtube but um so if you don't mind i will not be responding to you at least until i'm finished with the first part of this reading but you're welcome to uh observe and you know you could you can um make comments and write questions but like i said i probably won't even look up until hi tj <laughs> see i've already responded i can't do that right so i'm going to sit here and i'm going to i've already gone through this um this reading i've done my prayers and i uh, got myself into a good space just now um and i am going to do this reading i've made it i made the spread up myself this is uh just something I decided to do, um, but it seemed to work well yesterday. I did a general reading for everybody for the whole year, and so for Sagittarius, I'm going to do their overall reading uh, for 2018. Um, I may come back and do a regular general reading for December, but let's not push me. You know, it ain't that easy. So let's just go with this. Um, but I did want to get it done for them first. I want to thank Sagittarius for being such good supporters of the channels and for, you know, always responding, commenting, uh, sending, uh, sharing it and liking it. Um, it is amazing, um, the response. But that's what Sagittarius is, so why wouldn't they? Um, we know we're not perfect, right, Sagittarius? You know you're not perfect, but pretty close to it, right? <laughs> okay. So how this is going to go is I did take notes. I wrote notes, yes. I'm not a mind reader, nor am I supposed to, you know, like uh, I don't have a photographic memory, and I'm getting along in age, and MS does not help. So I do write things down because I don't want to forget the important stuff because this message is for you, all right? And I want to make sure that you get the message. And so I'm not trying to uh, impress anybody with my uh, memorization skills or any of that. I'd rather you get the message because it's not about me. This is about spirit needing you to have this message and using me to bring it to you. And that's all it is, okay? So um, what I did is... I this this tarot deck of the inner child fairy tale tarot the inner child cards of fairy tale tarot by Isha Lerner and Mark Lerner. Um, I've been using this every now and then during the year. And what they do is they uh, use the um, fairy tales, children's stories, um, children's story characters that we use to Disney characters, whatever. And they assign those major characters to the major arcana uh, in the regular tarot. So um, instead of going with the adult, you know, strength and justice and this death and all of this other stuff, they use children's images to depict those same energies, right? So... Um, this card, these cards were originally made for children, and um, then at the same time they were made for adults who they would use them in um, situations where you wanted to uh, go through your childhood traumas and regressions and things like that. So um, they're really oversized cards, like they're big. These are big compared to regular tarot cards, right? Um, which, of course, I don't have one to just snatch out because they're all in their cases. But 
regular tarot. Well, here I can do this. That's why I have to show you the front. See, regular tarot cards are this size. This is this is this and a half, right? So even as an adult, it's difficult to shuffle and to hold and whatever. And they did that on purpose because they wanted adults to have that a little bit of that. Uh, remember that little uncomfortableness that we all had as children not being able to reach things and not being able to hold things in our, our hands with one hand and that kind of stuff. You know, a little bit like what the president did the other day with the water bottle and the two hands. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So it just came to me. It just came to me as an example of, you know, go, you know, just things being uncomfortable in big, in big things being uncomfortable in little hands. So that's why they made this deck. So what I did for each month, I went through and um, the uh, fairy tale character that they had determined was uh, assigned to a particular uh, major arcana card. I, you know, figured out which one it was and they have everything all laid out for you. And I decided I was going to use your, um, those cards as the significators for this month. So it's, it's, it seemed to work well yesterday and I think it's working well today. So anyway, let me just get on to it. Um, and then you all see what I mean. So anyway, Sagittarius is uh, the card that's assigned to, gen to uh, Sagittarius in the inner child tarot is the guardian angel. Okay, guardian angel. Now the regular tarot, oops, I'm trying to get up with this camera here. Okay, all right, here we go. In the regular tarot, the guardian angel card, well, this card would be patience, temperance in the regular tarot. That would be the card for Sagittarius, right? So that's talking about protection and it talks about um, balance, all right? In, in temperance, you have the uh, guardian angel standing, pouring things from one urn to another, one canister, one vase to another in the the depiction. So this is about fairness. It's about protection. It's about patience. All right. It's about doing things in moderation. It also talks about abstinence. It talks about the time, for, a time for every purpose under heaven. Right. That's part of the Bible. Also the Beatitudes. Um, or maybe it's Song of Solomon. I, I don't remember, but there's a time for every purpose under heaven. This is about blending, and this could be blending families, okay, blending um, businesses, um, merging businesses. This could talk about moving in with someone, all right. Um, yeah, blending. Yeah, moving into some with someone. Hmm. Just you know, um, learning more about other cultures. Yeah. All right. So these are the things that are um, depicted in this card, and these are the characteristics that um, would go along with that. All right. Um, this talks about doing meditations, okay, talks about learning, okay, talks about unification, unification of spirit and souls, all right, this talks about um, <laughs> magic spells, and visualizations. This talks about fixing things. It talks about regulating things. Um, making sure that things are fair. All right. Sagittarius 
when you're in doubt, surround yourself with white light. When you feel unprotected, when you feel danger, okay, you need to burn white candles for protection and for clarity. Perhaps you could um, just try to wear white more often or lighter colors. All right. Um, there's a lot of things going on. We have been um, experiencing this uh, Saturn in the sign of Sagittarius for, I think they said it was three and a half years now or so, and it's getting ready to leave. So you all should feel a little bit of a relief from some of the crap that you've been going through for the last two or three years. So um, that's something to look forward to, except it doesn't happen until the 21st of December. And in the meantime, Saturn is going to, you know, go out kicking and screaming. He's going to keep giving it to y'all. So just brace yourself. But it's going. It'll pass over to Capricorn soon. Now, if you if you got a Capricorn moon or something like that, I, I, I you know, I feel for you. But <laughs> because now it's going to be giving you more, but lesser, lesser than it was when it's in your sun sign. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, and that's why Sagittarius has been having such a time these last couple of years because Saturn, that's what it does. It messes with you. Saturn is not your planet, though. Sagittarius' planet is Jupiter. And in these same cards, Jupiter is Alice in Wonderland. Okay? All right. So Alice in Wonderland... Um, and also, it would be the uh, Wheel of Fortune in the regular tarot, okay? Um, this card talks about ups and downs, all right, and the changes in life. This also talks about um, new adventures. This talks about reincarnation and having lived many lives before and bound to be living more lives in the future um, and talks about getting ready for those future incarnations. So all of this nonsense that you've been dealing with Sagittarius over the last couple of years, nay, for your life, all right, over and over again, it's not that you're not getting the lessons, it's that you have to go through these things in order to do the work that they want you to do later. And that's all it is. And yes, if you don't get it this time, you're going to come back and repeat it again. But that's, it's not, it's not for your um, punishment. It's for your incarnations, for the work that, the divine has for you to do, you have to go through these things because you have to be able to have a frame of reference, some type of experience um, in the work that it is you want you to do. And you're not, even if you avoid doing it in this life, the work, you're going to do it again in another life because that's what your cycle is. You are a teacher. You are a person, uh, a spirit that has been sent to do a thing. And so however long it takes you to make that, those revolutions, in while you're doing that, while you're doing all that avoidance and everything, you're still going to be going through these things because that's just like part of the resume, I guess, that they want you to have before you can graduate to the you know, next level of uh, what it is they're having you to do. Okay, so this also talks about the cycle of time, minutes, seconds, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries, eternity, okay? Everything that fills eternity, all the time. It talks about your ancestors' um, just like they're encouraging you on. They 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 they've got your back. You know they're like your team. Okay. 
Um, this also talks about paying attention to your dreams, okay, and seeing your life, your particular life, from a higher perspective, okay. Take time to sit down and think about what have you gone through and what does it mean? What did you extrapolate out of these experiences, okay? Again, if you try to um, keep a journal or something by your bed, a uh, piece of paper, a notebook, something, and, and start to take note of your dreams. Maybe that's something you could commit to for the coming year. Okay, those dreams might uh, give you a lot of information that you don't have. If you don't remember your dreams, that's fine. Um, just when you wake up, what's the impression, you know, what's the first thing you think about? when you wake up, you know, or what makes an impression on you throughout the day. Keep a, a journal of those things. They might turn out to be important later on. Um, it, see your life from a higher perspective. Like, understand that there is a purpose to your life in particular. And decide whether or not you're going to be obedient, or if you're going to wait, because it's all free will, you know, but just be aware, even if you wait, you're still going to have those lessons, because sooner or later, you're going to give in, <laughs> because that's just how it is, um, but you have a free will, and you will do it, because they will bring you, they will bring you that low that you have no choice but to do it, okay, it's like, Oh, what? <laughs> you know, and that's how you're feeling, I know, you know, but there are going to be lots of opportunities for um, prosperity in this coming year and for expansion. So you might find that you might buy a, a house, you may build your business or you may start a business. Okay, you might decide to go back to school or take some lessons, some classes online. Um, you might be dealing more with children. You might have a baby, you might start having grandchildren, or you might come into contact more with young people, and um, you're going to be spending time with them, and you're going to be playing, you're going to be teaching them about the games that you used to play, and, and, and you know, bringing that to them, um, uh, passing down those heritages, you know, uh, we didn't have Nintendo, we didn't have PlayStation, we didn't have all these things when we were little. So there are games that we learned how to play to keep us busy, keep us out of our parents' hairs, you know, um, take up the space between lunch and dinner. You know, we, we, we would play and we had games and we would play outside. And how many of us have ever taught our children how to play any of those games? How many of your kids know how to play Skelly? What's Skelly, right? <laughs> How many of your kids know how to play um, stickball or, or punchball or, you know, um, any of these games that you don't need golf clubs for or, you know, doesn't cost a lot to do? We need to share these experiences with our children, even though they're not, you know, of that generation. They may not be as active as we were as kids, but maybe they need to get more active. And if you pass the point where your kids are grown and your grandchildren, then this is your chance to, you know, teach the grandchildren, you know, um, share those things with them because their parents will be able to tell them about it because they don't know nothing about it. So we have to pass down these things. That's what they are going to have. That's, that's part of some, some of you, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be passing information to the next generation. You're going to be, you know, telling stories and reading stories and, helping them to, um, you know, learn how to plant and learn how to grow um, vegetables and flowers and corn and all of these things. That's might be your mission. That might be what they want you to do. Okay. But you'll find out what it is that they want you to do. You'll figure it out sooner or later. Um, let's see what else. Uh, this might be a good time to go in for a raise or a promotion too um, in this coming year. 
Sagittarius. Sorry for trying this. I'm just trying to keep the glare out of it so you all can see it. Okay, or building your business, as I said before. Uh, building onto your home, buying a new home, expanding, um, buying a condo. Um, mm, any large ticket item, a car, a boat. Uh, you might be going on a trip overseas. Um, fortune's on your side this year, so you have to think prosperity and positivity. But um, don't go nuts, all right? Like, if you win, don't lose all the money that you win in the lottery, okay? If, if you hit the number, just be careful. All right, don't spend it all in one place. Don't uh, waste it on things that are not of value. If you can invest it, if, you know, if you can uh, buy land or a home, something that's going to increase in value, not a car. <laughs> um, invest in some artwork. Did you all see um, OJ? By Jay Z, he wasn't telling us nothing's wrong. He was telling us what's right. Make an investment. You never know. These things increase in value. If you can, if you can't do it by yourself, then maybe instead of everybody spending money at Christmas, you and your siblings get together and invest in some artwork or or or, or buy some stock or do something. You know, we, we, we have to we have to get on board this. We have to start doing our thing, folks. Come on. All right. So anyway, Sagittarius, that's um and this would be a good year for you to do things like that or to look into doing things like that. Again, Saturn is still lurking, so don't do anything like this month. But in January or after the twenty first of December when um everything turns to Capricorn, then you're good. Don't Try not to sign any contracts, any anything between now and the 21st of uh, December. I would try to shy away from. But after that, always have someone to look it over and always make sure that you could trust whoever it is that you have looking over because there are swindlers out there and uh, you don't want to be prey. Okay? So the those are the energies that came from the inner uh, in the child tarot. Now, <clears throat> like I said, this is my own spread. I made this up. We'll see how it goes. I uh, went, uh, I shoveled up the uh, Romance Angel Oracle deck, and the card that came up for you, Sagittarius, is keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. So this could be about romance, right? Again, this could also be about the work that you have to do, all right? And so you keep an open mind. Maybe uh, it's not going to be as scary as you may think, right? Um, so this is telling me you're going to be running into new people probably this year if you're out there. If you go out and let yourself be seen, if you're not playing the hermit game because, you know, you're licking your wounds right now because you're still going through that Saturn nonsense. I know. But once you get that all cleared up and you'll feel it, you'll, you'll, you'll feel it different. You're like, whoo, right? When you feel that and whatever, you're going to start meeting people and perhaps you're going to be meeting all kinds of folks, folks that you usually don't interact with. And um, some, of, some of those people, because I'm, I'm feeling it's not just going to be one, but some of those people may find you very interesting and very attractive and might want to get to know you better. So I think that this is going to be a year where you're going to be doing some dating, Sagittarius. Now, for some of you, you might not need to date another person in your life. And you all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but the rest of you, you'll be meeting people and you need to be open to going out on dates and, 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 and having new experiences. There's going to be a lot of that. Because, again, that, that you know, woe is me 
you know, carrying the weight of the world thing is going to kind of lift itself. And as you lift up, you'll lift your head and people will see you and then uh, sparks are going to fly, you know, and you can just have fun. I'm not telling anybody to go out and do anything with anybody. I'm just talking about going on dates. Everything after that, that's on you. Um, be careful who you're dating because you are going to be attracting all kinds of folks that you may not have ever, you know, attracted before. You know, be careful, you know. Try to, you know, Google, Google them or whatever the hell. Find out as much as you can about the person, but have a good time. This is about you having a good time after all the hard time that you've had over the last couple of years, Sag. Okay, so that's what came out of the Romance Angel Oracle deck. Now, I also shuffled the uh, Tarot of the Orisha deck, all right, by Sherlock and Durkheim, my favorite. And these two cards decided that they wanted to show up and talk to you today. So this is Karma, and this is the lovers, the couple. So what this said to me, this is talking about a relationship that has been around a long time. This could be a childhood sweetheart, somebody that you've known the majority of your life. You, you know, you may have um, been childhood sweethearts or you grew up together, but this is a relationship that has stood the test of time. Okay. Um, this also talks about getting back what you put out, right? Karma, all right? This also talks about working together, all right? Um, taking time, going on vacation, enjoying each other's company. Now, I wanted to clarify those cards, and so I chose... Well, I shuffled, and I got these three cards from the Rider Wake deck, okay? And you got the Three of Cups. So the Three of Cups alongside this talks about good things. This is maybe a celebration, okay? This could be talking about somebody getting married, a wedding, all right? So somebody could be getting married this year, Sagittarius, or getting engaged at least, some type of celebration that centers around family or a couple. So you could be um, planning a wedding. Could be planning a wedding, going to a wedding. But this is about love and celebration, happy family. Next card that you got was Four of Wands. Okay, Four of Wands talks about a strong foundation, talks about a home, right, family, all right, building, you know, the things that we all want, a good foundation, strength, love, happiness, fairness, so it's pretty good. Got a happy couple who've been together a long time. Right? Celebration. Found a strong foundation for a relationship. Perfect. Very good. Then we got not 10 of Coins. Ten of coins in the upright position is great. This means that you are getting your wishes have been fulfilled. There is prosperity. There is stability. Okay? But because Saturn is still hanging on, <laughs> this came in the reverse. So in the reverse... The nine of coins, and I want to make sure I give this to you exactly how it is. <sighs> nine of coins could be talking about being careful, being um, <clears throat> careful of swindlers. Like I said before, when you go to sign contracts and stuff, 
if you're going to make buy a house or buy a car or whatever like that, read the fine print. Try to delay it if you can until the middle of December or the beginning, like after the 21st or next year, you know, signing anything. Try to see if you can put it off. All right. Um, Hmm. Um, this may be talking about um, feeling stuck in a relationship. This feeling stuck in a relationship um, or a marriage. So that could be showing a good face to the world, but when the doors are closed, it's not a happy place. Okay, being miserable behind smiles. That could be what that's talking about. Um, mm, this could be not of um this could be talking about making choices between your spiritual gifts and materialism. Okay. Um, this could also be talking about gambling, um, higher taxation. Um, could also be talking about emotional baggage that could be lingering within your relationship with your partner, things that you haven't cleared up as yet. Um, could be feeling abandoned or misunderstood, especially by your family and those close to you. Um, you will be hearing from your ancestors. You will be hearing from your ancestors. Your ancestors are the people who have already passed over. So you will be hearing from them and you will be able to recognize their voices when you hear it. I'm telling you this now so that you don't freak out when it happens. Just know what it is. Center yourself. And you're more than capable of the Sagittarius because you might be trying to front, but you know you're very spiritual and you're not afraid. So when you, um, as the year goes on, you're going to start being able to recognize more signals from your ancestors. You're going to be able to recognize those voices when you hear them, or you're going to recognize the um, little signs and, and, and things that they leave around. You're going to pick it up. You're going to recognize and feel their presence with you more. Again, because they're trying to get you ready for the work. So they're going to be coming at you a little, a little more, especially as you get older. So, don't freak out. Just let go, let God. Okay? So those were the um the Tarot of the Arisha and the um uh, right away deck. So like I said, be careful. Robbery, gambling, investments. And if you know that you're in a relationship, that your family is not as happy as uh, the rest of the world has been led to believe, and this is something that you've done on purpose, then you all might should look, look about fixing that, all right, for your own sake. Because really, people have their own problems, and they really don't care what's going on. So fix it. <laughs> all right. The next card that uh, I pulled was from the... Um, Conscious Spirit Oracle Deck. And the card that you guys, Sagittarian, was, Sagittarius, was Earth Angel. Oh, Earth Angel. So, I am a guardian of Mother Earth and protect all who live on her. Sounds like work. <laughs> okay. So, this number, the card is... 34, 3 plus 4 equals 7. Hmm, 7. What do we know about 7? 
<laughs> seven is the number of God's work, right? Seven, right? Seven days, that's what they tell us. Seven is a divine number. Seven is an important number and it's divine, just like you. Important and divine. All righty. Earth angel. <sighs> okay, here we go. I am, okay. I am a guardian of Mother Earth and protect all who live on her. This card is a reminder to you that it is time to awaken the protective angelic side of yourself in order to safeguard the earth and all life on it for future generations. Begin by ensuring that your actions and words are supportive of a sustainable future for this beautiful planet. Through active participation in living a harmonious life with all of nature, you can show others the way forward. Be unselfish and compassionate in all your dealings with people, animals, and all of the natural world. Show compassion to friends and to family and strangers through daily random acts of kindness. Remember, though, that expecting something in return negates the sincerity behind your good deeds. Give unconditionally. By sharing and caring for all life on this planet, you can help raise the energy bringing the earth closer to a point where fear can be replaced by love and future generations can have their own hopes and dreams for a better future. Ashe. So that goes back to what we were uh, speaking about earlier, about the work that you need to do. Um, when I did the uh, general reading for the whole year for everybody, I posted that yesterday. And you can see that um, on YouTube or you could check uh, the, our stories continue, which is my blog page, and you'll be able to see that. It also might be on my timeline. Um, it talked about recycling, re, re, um, repurposing, um, handing clothes down, you know, uh, donating clothes, bartering, you know, trading things, learning how to lessen your footprint. Right, and teaching others how to do that also. And as I said about planting um, flowers and, and 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 food sources and things like that, these are things that um, we can do to create a legacy um, that may satisfy your spiritual path assignment, um, or at least get you started and rolling on the way. So that's something that you may be want to look into also I think it also meant that you have you need to spend more time in nature maybe you haven't been getting out as much as you can maybe you've been inside a lot because <laughs> right so start circulating some more all right share the wealth with the rest of us we know how wonderful you are we want you to know how wonderful you are too said okay the next card that we got here were, was flowers. This is from the um, Doreen Virtue Life Purpose deck. Let me get that out. Now, this is a new deck. We just opened this up this week. All right. So this is an oracle deck, and it tells what your life purpose should be. So... Has diff it seems they have different um different um occupations, different ways that life could go. And the one that came out for you was flowers. So let's see what that says. Flowers. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to others through your life purpose. Okay. Who knew? All right, so let's see. These come with guidebooks. Flowers. All righty. Here we go. Mm. Okay. All right, Sagittarius, here we go. Flowers. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to others through 
your life purpose. This card signifies your special connection to flowers, whose fragrance, color, and beauty provide healing blessings. As you grow, admire, photograph, and work with blossoms, so does your connection with the divine blossom. Okay, nice. Your affinity for flowers is just beginning, and spending time among them will help every part of your life bloom. You may literally work with flowers, for example, as a gardener, a florist, or a flower essence healer. Or it may be that spending personal time with these lovely features of the natural world sparks your creative ideas about a new career path. Da 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 da. <laughs> so whether your relationship with flowers is destined to become a career or have an avocation. Okay. So whether your relationship with flowers is destined to become a career or an avocation, spend time with them today. Walk through a flower shop and notice which color blooms you're drawn to. This flower holds healing properties that you need right now. If possible, take home and spend time absorbing its color and fragrance. Trust the flower's wisdom and power to help you upon your life purpose pathway. Okay, so there's another way that you could be fulfilling your spiritual purpose. All right, so maybe you can make perfumes or, or oils or incenses and musks and stuff like that. Maybe you have um, a talent for that, being an herbalist, as in flowers. We don't want them taking this down from Facebook because we're not talking PG and stuff. Okay, so getting more in touch with, with flora, florists, flowers, like I said, perfumes, um, scents, lotions, I'm hearing, things like that. You know, maybe there's something in that realm, you know, um, that could be work, used in spiritual work. Maybe you can, who knows, you could develop uh, those baths and oils that people go to the spiritual stores, the botanicas, and, the, and they, uh, they buy them. Maybe that's something that you could get into. Maybe you have that ashe, that touch, you know, that, um, that magic within you. That when you work with herbs and flowers, you you might have the touch. You may have that 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 uh, fountain of youth touch. That that secret formula that could heal people or change things. You know, change people's auras, change the aura of their home, their own personal aura because now they're smelling better than they were. You know, so look into it. Gardening again teaching children how to garden, um, how to plant flowers and vegetables. Okay, we need to, to know all these skills. All right, so that is another avenue that you could work on uh, fulfilling your spiritual assignment. Check it. Can't hurt. Might help. Right? Okay. Finally, well, not finally, but this next card was from the uh, native <sighs> native spirit cards, all right, by Denise Lynn. So these have a uh, Native American feel to them. And the card that you got was... So why did I put that back? Because the book is there. No, it's not. <laughs> the book is the why did uh, the, the what card you got was Sacred Mountain. Okay, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this so you can see. First of all, these cards are beautiful, and the artwork is fantastic. Sacred Mountain. Hmm. All right, so guidebook for Sacred Mountain. 
okay. I don't use these cards a lot. I usually give myself readings with them. That's just the way I was led. But I pull it out every now and then if I feel like I need it. Okay, here we go. Sacred Mountain. Okay, so. This card means be still. Take the time to move into the silent place within yourself. Locate your internal source of power. Meditate. Wait. Do not move forward until it feels right. Surrender to stillness. Do not take action. If you observe rather than react, you claim your power. The, your native spirit wants you to know from the vantage point of the sacred mountain, your power grows. In silence, you'll find your sacred witness. It is the dwelling place of your soul. In peace, seek and discover your truth. Move past the bustle and clutter of life into sweet quietude. If you're in pain, don't lash out. Go into it until you and the pain. Go into it until you find the source so that it can be healed. Wow. Resist the temptation to indulge in feelings of stress, urgency, and emergency. Your power is born in silence. This peace gives birth to your serenity. Seek solitude to listen to the voice of your higher self and awaken your inner wisdom. Travel to the peaks of hallowed mountains. And if you can't do this in person, travel in your meditations. Imagine yourself atop a high peak. You see the world in all directions. Give thanks and offerings to mountains whenever you encounter them. The spirit of the mountain will deeply appreciate your gift. Is that beautiful? All right. So again, this is, they, they want you to start getting in touch with nature, it seems, uh, Sag. seems like you're not getting out enough. You're not appreciating nature. You've been kind of hermited in the last couple of years too, right? You're kind of keeping to yourself and not going out too much for whatever reason, mostly because you're just sick of people, right? Right, okay. So um, it's time for you to get up on it, all right? And, oh, wow. I will look to the hills from which comes my help, right? That's the psalm in the Bible. Get in touch with nature. Get, in, get out there in the world and find a peaceful place. If you can't create a sacred, quiet space in your home, find somewhere out there to do it. In the world, a park, national parks, get them while they're still free because that, that'll be over soon too. Um, you, even something as, 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 as easy as, um, sorry, my, um, Google has a Google earth and you can actually go and look at, um, those pictures, right? And if you have, uh, the Chromecast, you can cast from your computer, I think, to the TV. And sometimes you'll get some beautiful, uh, shots of the earth from NASA and Google Earth and people taking their own pictures. My son and I sit here sometimes and we just let, it's like a slide and just, you know, it's coming through Google, I guess, or Chromecast, I don't know. But you just get all these beautiful photographs and sometimes paintings, artworks, um, mosaics and stuff. You sit down and just watch it and think and chill. You can make those kind of moments for yourself throughout your day or throughout your week. And that's what you need in order to 
give yourself a chance to decompress from all of this, from all the stuff. You need time for for you, Sagittarius, because you're always doing it for people. It's like people don't even notice that you're like going through something. You know. Of course, we're not angels, you know. We're not all, we're not angels. Everybody's human. We all do things that are not correct and nice. All right. But you have a chance to make amends and do things a different way. So is that everything that I wanted to share with you guys? Yes. As I said, you will be hearing from your ancestors and you will be recognizing their voices when they speak to you. Tonight I was just in here um, playing the music and them. I was trying to get myself in the mood to do this. So for some reason tonight I, I uh I got into Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. <laughs> you know, and I was like, what? I'm listening to it and I'm in it and then I remembered, oh my goodness, I used to listen to this so you know, Queen and, and, and everything. I wonder why my, my child likes death metal. I, I I it was too much exposure. I didn't think it was that serious. But between that and going to uh the Waldorf school I guess there wasn't much chance of it coming out any other way. <laughs> anyway, shout out to the Waldorf School and shout out to Joanne. I don't know if she, she's up this evening, Joanne Gray. Happy birthday, Joanne. I love you. Um, and the other, there were a whole bunch of songs. And at one point, I guess when I'm upset or when I'm trying to shake it off, I start off it seems with the same song like uh, playlist but I have no playlist I just these are the songs and apparently my son recognizes <laughs> he's been hearing them all his life so um, he said that when he heard me play step by step by Whitney Houston he was like uh oh what's the matter <laughs> so because I'm out here and I'm you know getting into it and I was saying it, I, it has that that tribal thing to it something about it um reminds me of that native tribal stuff and he was like yeah it, it does it has that that beat you know so i played that first and he says you always start with that he said when that comes on i know there's a problem somewhere but it's not a problem it's music that lifts me you know i like music music is my thing and so when i'm feeling down or when i want to get myself motivated I play music and it's not because I'm dancing. Sometimes I'm dancing, but not really. I, I'm singing basically, but I knew I couldn't do that because you sing on this YouTube or Facebook and now you got to pay royalties. They cut off your, your, your video. You can't show it. So I, I refrain from that. But oh man, I was in here. Mm. Especially when Zoom came on. Now that song, I first time I heard Zoom was I guess August of 1977 and I don't particularly care for Lionel Richie but that this song when I die make sure my kids have this that song playing in the funeral home or somewhere all right zoom by the Commodores so y'all heard it make sure that's what gets done if you come I love that song. And so after I played Step by Step and then I'm Every Woman, okay, now I'm on a roll. Then Bohemian Rhapsody and then Zoom. And he came out and he's like, you okay, Ma? <laughs> but I'm fine. I just needed to just, you know, do that. Music is my sacred space, you know. And uh, if there's no one here to hear it, then it, it's cool. I mean, He's here, he's my kid, you know, so, but he's grown, he can go and leave, but he doesn't, he stays, he listens, you know, and uh, I I go through it, you know, um, I, you know, as it's called, um, I don't feel no ways tired, I'm in here singing it, 
and you know like I'm in church <laughs> you know and he's like you okay but that's all right that's all right at least I find a way to um burn off some of that mm, negative energy that sometimes comes upon you um like a, my theme is music always has been music okay now i'm gonna say hi hi kevin hi casey hi keith hi darnell hi charles mr lee angel dorothea hi Dottie. ted hi Sha sharon super hi okay all right hey hi brenda is there a time of day that you bless us with your readings I wish I could be so organized. I don't want, I wanted to do that today, but I was afraid. But, 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 I'm going to do all the other signs, right? So this is Sagittarius, so tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow. See, this is what I don't want to say. Because if I get too tired, I won't do it. I could actually probably do tonight. I would do Capricorn next, in that order, after Sagittarius. Um... So I'm not so organized, and uh, hopefully I can do that next year. I'll start to become more organized about the times that I'm going to get. But um, I don't know. This is not an excuse. This is just the reason. Um, I was diagnosed with um, multiple sclerosis in 2008, so I might have probably had it all my life. That's why everybody thinks I, I was lazy, but I wasn't lazy. I was tired. <laughs> so um, hi, Brian. Hi, Steve. <laughs> so um I don't want to say my 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 main symptom from my MS is fatigue. All right, my other symptom is I you know lost my eyesight for a few weeks there, but it came back. But it was very scary um to lose your eyesight. Even if it's just one eye, this doesn't make it it um, you know, just a scary thing. And when they don't know why. And and at first they had no idea why. And by the time my eyesight came back, it take that it took that long to get an appointment with the specialist. But I met I, I found this the greatest. My doctor is a neurologic ophthalmologist. Not many of those in the world. So that means he has uh training in uh ophthalmology and neurology and uh after all the doctors that i had been through um he was able to diagnose me right there in his office and he said well you can go home and pack a bag or i can call an ambulance now and i'm like what and he says you got to go to the hospital so i had to stay in the hospital for i think it was four days uh iv steroids that was supposed to stop um, the progression of any damage um, that had happened to my eyes. Um, multiple sclerosis is a disease that, um, hmm. okay, so you know how electrical cords, when you open up an electric cord, right, they have those uh, like red and blue and green, all these different color coils that wrap around the copper or whatever the conducting metal is inside. This is not about that, but this is the way this is. So this is the sheath that covers our nerves. Multiple sclerosis uh, takes that away. So your nerves, you know, imagine the reason that they have those, those things around the different uh, pieces of copper is so that they don't spark and, you know, misfire and all of that. Okay, so that is what goes on inside of a person with MS and it, you know, goes, uh, your brain and all other kind of stuff. So that's going to be a problem sometimes speaking and thinking and seeing and walking and people think that you're drunk when you're not, it's just you, your, your balance is off. Your, uh, just the way you walk is off. You could, you know, it's, it's a lot, but it's little things. Um, uh, some people have it so bad that they they're you know wheelchair brown or, be, or bedridden and things like that so i thank god every day 
that it's that's not me. But you know, I carry a cane. Um, I can't stand up for too long, and I walk for too long. You know, places uh, can't be out in too much heat which is very discouraging because I wanted to retire and move to Barbados or Cuba, and uh, that would be too warm for me. Um, even Las Vegas would have been too hot. Um, all the places I would have loved to be. But it is what it is. So uh, I have to take medication, and I have to, you know, see the neurologist and there are all kind of different uh, treatments for it these days, but there's no cure for it. It's a chronic illness. And so there's days that I don't get out the bed at all. So I don't want to say that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, You know, the fatigue is... It, it, And they give you medication for the the, the um, fatigue, but sometimes MS doesn't care about the medication because it's going to put you on your butt. And so you got to learn how to go with it. So what I what I have learned to do is kind of store up energy. So if I know I'm going to be doing something, like go out somewhere, I try to rest up a few days beforehand. When I go on vacation. I try to rest up beforehand and um, rest as much as I can throughout the vacation. You know, I don't have to be at everything, just the main things and the big things. So, like, let's say there's uh, you're going somewhere for five, for five nights, five days, and uh, you you could you know skip one event or, or you know. The, Stay in your room in the afternoon. Let everybody else go out hiking and whatever they're doing. <laughs> and that's what I, I have to do. I have no choice. Um, I have to keep something cold with you all the time, ice packs in my purse. I've learned how to how to um, operate with it because I was able, thank God, to go on, on three vacations a few years ago. I went to Panama. I went to Barbados. I went to Hawaii. Again, that was part of my mission. I didn't know that. I did not know that that was part of my spiritual journey, but turns out later on I found out, oh, 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 okay, I understand why. But anyway, you know, those are hot places. Um, but I carry, you know, um, cold packs in my purse, um, those things that you put around your neck, try to stay hydrated, excuse me. See, I use one hand, and this is a bigger than the water bottle. Okay, sorry, who on? Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Prantic healing? All right, thank you, Dorothy. I'll look at that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. She put a link. All right, I'll look at that. Definitely. But, you know, I, I, I and, and my neurologist is an excellent neurologist also, Dr. Vincent um, Macaluso um, in Queens. And he, my doctor has MS himself. He was going to school to be a doctor. And then when he was in college, that's when he, they discovered that he had MS. So he continued and he is a, a physician and he specializes in neurology. So... That's good when your doctor has the same disease, and when because sometimes you don't, you can't even explain some of the things that happen. People think you're crazy, but when you say it to somebody who has it, they're like, yeah, okay, I know, because they know because you have it. You know, you could tell somebody about spasms, and they're looking for it to look one way, but it's not that. It's stuff that goes on underneath your skin. Your skin doesn't move. It's in your muscle, something, but you feel it and you know it. It's like a ripple, like a bubble. Like when you're pregnant and a baby kicks the first uh, early months, I think that's the, the, the closest I could explain it to for women. You feel those, you know, little flutter, flutter kicks sometimes. That kind of stuff goes on inside of your arms and your muscles. You, you know, you get numbness. Oh, whatever, whatever. But hallelujah anyhow, because guess they didn't tell me I was dying. You just got to handle it, you know? 
it may be gen they say that it's not passed down but i'm pretty sure it has to be at some point there are people who have it run in their family um one of my aunts she always just complain of fibromyalgia fibromyalgia which is similar but not the same and maybe it was ms but she looked to be hmm, in her late 80s fine you know but you just have to take care of yourself and not push yourself okay thank you so much dorothy though i'm gonna i'm gonna check that out when this when i'm done so uh did i miss saying hi to anybody i hey webster um so what was i gonna do i think that um i think we went through everything Okay, so what I wanted to do for Sagittarius, for their, mm, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull an until today card for you guys and the postcards from spirits card and close this up hello sandra hey misty okay so we are going to until today cards these are by yana van zandt and we'll see whether or not there's any guidance for the 2018 year coming for you All right, let's, okay. All right, Sagittarius, let's see what this is. All aspects of who I am are important. Ashe. Until today, you may have believed that having a dark side makes you unworthy to seek and receive the light. Hmm. Just for today, remember that stars only shine in the darkness. Transform the energy of your dark side to enhance your star quality. Ah, say. Very good. I think that, that that's pretty self-explanatory, don't you? All aspects of who I am are important, even the dark side. Everybody has a dark side. Whoa! I'm showing up, Marie, all up in it. <laughs> That's the aunt that had the fun from my house. <laughs> okay, see? My eggs are funny. Oh, my God. She wanted to get on. Okay, I'm Marie. <sighs> She had the fibromyalgia, and uh, actually, she took that picture she, when she was at her doctor's office. That was one of the um, pictures that she had towards the end. My father and his sisters, her hair was still dark, black. The other one, Ethel, all of them, their hair was black until they were like in their 80s and 90s. When my father passed away, his hair was still black. But that, okay, that's that Native American Florida spirit <laughs> and genetics, I guess. And we thank God for that, you know. But, yeah, um, all aspects of who I am are important. Until today, you may have believed that having a dark side makes you unworthy to seek and receive light. So even, even us heathens... In the land of Sagittarius, even you heathens, you can be of purpose to God, okay? Everything about you is important, okay? Stars only shine in darkness. Transform that energy of your dark side to enhance your star quality. So some of that energy that you exert on playing the field or, you know, Going from flower to flower to flower, maybe you can uh, direct that energy somewhere else 
and that'll keep your name out of people's mouths. <laughs> keep them from doing any spells and formulas and potions on you. <laughs> Okay, just think about it, Sag. I'm just saying. You know, there's more things in life besides pollination. Okay. All right, so the next card that came up here for you here is I forgive myself for holding on to the need to be right. Hmm. Until today, you may not have been aware that you still need external validation to feel good about yourself. Surrender what you believe is wrong with you, and you'll never again feel the need to be right. Asha. Hey, Steve. Hi, Diana, Sandra, Misty. I said that hi to Misty already. Nishan. I didn't speak to Nishan. Okay, folks, so those are the messages for the new for the uh, coming year, for 2018, that we're going to have to work on, right, Sash? Try to stop holding on to the need to be right. You don't need anybody else's validation. You just need your own validation. But karma, the, the karma we create, some karma will get this life, some karma will drag into the other life, and some of the karma will affect our family, our children. All right, so be careful what you do to people. All right, and how you treat people. If you have a problem with that, then maybe you may want to, you know, sit a couple of the parties out. <laughs> you know? Put your energy elsewhere. Find a mountain to climb or sit by. Don't bring people drama. Or you don't mean to. Your, your intention out the gate is not drama. It's just you being you. But people don't appreciate you as much as you appreciate yourself. Sad. So just, you know, try to cool it a little bit. <clears throat> so anyway, these cards are the Postcards from Spirit, and they're by Colette Baron reed They uh, just came out a few uh, months ago, a few weeks ago, and I did an unboxing here on Facebook. Um, so what they are are messages, and they're on Postcards, right? Individual messages on postcards, okay? And when we ask questions, even if we're talking to one particular ancestor, it's go they're going to answer us back in the collective, as in we, okay, or our, or us. But they're going to be talking directly to you. Tonight, we're going to ask them to let's see if they if any of these messages can be relevant to us for the sign of Sagittarius for the ensuing year of 2018. All right. Can we have a message of encouragement, direction? Thank you, ancestors, so that we can uh, Do what it is that the divine would have us to do. Lessons that we need to have, things that we need to let go of, things that we need to remember. And thanks everybody for hanging out with me while I do this. I appreciate it. I know it's uh, like you're watching me do a reading, like. You know, but I appreciate you all having the time and patience to join me. And I hope that something that was shared tonight would be of edification for everybody. 
And um, once I post this, if you know anybody that's a Sagittarius, you want to share it with them, please do. Okay, so this postcard says, you are magic. <laughs> you are magic. It has a little stamp in the corner, two cents from heaven. Dearest you, there are times when loss is a part of life. Sometimes a loss is welcome. Like when you leave a situation not in alignment with your highest good. Sometimes a loss is sudden and painful, like when a loved one crosses over to our dimension. Regardless of the nature of the loss and your control over it, your experience is asking to be acknowledged. Tears are necessary, as is grief. When you repress the natural expression of loss and try to move on too quickly, the unprocessed pain haunts you in destructive ways. We don't want that for you. Instead, let your heart break open wide. Feel the loss and integrate it. See the beauty that was, the lessons learned, and know that as you let go of what has passed, even more of you remains. It gets better, we promise. Your heart expands with more compassion for the world than ever. Love heals all. We are loving you and sending you love always and forever. Ashe. That's beautiful. And I think that does tie in with what we talked about right earlier. All the things that Sagittarius has been uh, experiencing over the last few years or throughout their lives have brought you all to this place today where you are. And instead of moving on, you know, so quickly, like we were talking about from the hurt and just, you know, say, OK, that's done. Let's move on to the next thing. You know, so sad, too bad. I can't get stuck in that emotion. What what the spirit is saying, what your ancestors are saying, is that you need to let to feel it, feel the pain, feel the hurt, feel the loss. It's hard because you know that's that's making yourself vulnerable, and you are a fire sign, and just like um, Aries and Leo, very proud, not as ridiculous, <laughs> but still. And, you know, you don't want to bring other people's heads down either. Sagittarius is, is the party, you know. Um, but sometimes you have to take that place and uh, let it out. Let those tears out. It's not like they're not earned or deserved. It's, you know, it's not like you, um, hey, Dawn. Hi, John. Hi, Mark. Uh, it's not like you um, don't play in the victim or anything. Shit happened. <laughs> Real shit, <laughs> you know? But you didn't tell nobody about it. You didn't complain too much. You make it look easy. So maybe that's another thing that you're going to learn before Saturn travels off to harass Capricorn for another couple of years that you need to let your friends help you. You need to talk about it, get it out. And if that's too much, then have a good cry in the shower. Okay? Or in your car with your uh, windows rolled up. Not with the engine on in the garage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just don't go extreme, but you need to get it out. You need to get it out. 
There, uh, this other song came tonight. Why? I don't know. But it it really the Osmond the Osmond brothers came to my mind, and I was thinking about that song. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Seriously, really. <laughs> But I had to play it, and I actually found a version of it uh, that was just lovely. You know, and you listen to those songs and remind us of who we are, you know, who we're supposed to be, you know. It's really like a prayer, you know, um, if you read the words and listen to it, like, Wow, I didn't know that that song was so deep, but it came to me tonight again before I did the reading when I was listening to, you know, getting in the mood. But that was the first song, actually, before any of them. It was He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. So um, look it up on YouTube or, you know, maybe you have it in your crate somewhere in the stash that you don't let nobody see. <laughs> um but it's, it's deep. It really is when you listen to those words. Again, I'm going to I, – I, I probably could do another one. We'll have to see. Anyway, I have to get this uploaded and transferred and all of that. But I'm awake. And uh, it's only 1030. All right, maybe. Maybe I'll come back and do another one for Capricorn. We'll see. Not promising anything. Um, but while I'm here. Um, hey, Dawn. Did you want to ask me something? Is Teddy still here? I know this Teddy is a Sagittarius. I could give him, pull a card for him. I think he left. Okay. I know he's a Sagittarius because he's my uncle. <laughs> hey. All right. Okay, everybody. So that was the reading for the um, month. Well, actually the year 2018 general energies for the sign of Sagittarius. Um, I did them first because it's their birth month. And... Uh, they're very, very good about liking and sharing and commenting on my videos on YouTube. If you'd like to join that party, you can uh, find me on YouTube. The, uh, I have two channels, actually. One is Ea, Emi, Patsy, E-Y-A-E-M-I, Patsy, P-A-T-S-Y. And if you go to my... Um, blog page our stories continue here on facebook if you click on any of those uh, videos of any of the readings i've done it'll take you to one of the channels the other channel is ia arzula egum ia is i y a ia just means like mother um arzula a r z u l a um that was one of my uh, ancestors' names. I found that out this past year. I didn't know that. Arzula. And Arzula is um, a derivative of Urzuli, which is a uh, name of one of the Orisha in the um, like uh, uh, Haitian tradition. I believe Loas, L-O-A, that so and it's French and so there's some Louisiana you know that energy in my ancestral line I'm I'm finding out um, and okay ancestry.com it, it's controversial but I'll tell you this much I put that name in because, like, where did you get this, you know, where did that name come from? You know, my great-grandparents on my father's side were slaves and sharecroppers. That's how close it is in my family for slavery. 
So Arzula is an African name, right? Sounds like it, or French, African, whatever. So I put it in, and they have a way that you can find where names are most common. Benin, Togo, in Africa. That that was the only like place. It took like Louisiana and Benin, Togo. That makes sense. According to my DNA, I'm 32% from the, the um, Benin, Togo. That's the hot. That's higher than than any other percentage of my DNA. And there was Arzula is a name that could be found in a village in Fon of the Fon people, F O N. And so there we are. <laughs> so, so I was like, wow. So when I was like, I like that name anyway. And I guess, you know, you know, when you're a kid or whatever, young and people, you have a weird name. And so you try to find ways to shorten it and whatever. So she, um, she was actually my grandmother's sister. Okay. So um, she used Julie and Susie and Zula. Now, part of that is because when the uh, census, census takers come, they wasn't really t paying attention on how to spell the name correctly or anything like that. And again, they probably were illiterate, so they they just knew the name. They probably didn't know exactly how they would, wanted to spell it. I've seen it spelled with an O, seen it spelled with a Z, with S's, whatever. So her name was Arzula, and uh, she was my grandmother's sister. And uh, that was cool to find out, you know. That was cool. So I just... I glommed onto it. So anyway, the channel is Ia Arzula Agon. So it's Ia I Y A Arzula A R Z U L A and Agon is E G U N. So that's one of the channels. So it's um, Ia Patsy Ia Emi Patsy or Ia Arzula Agon or Ifa Midwives. You should be able to. Um, Oh, I know you're a Capricorn, Dawn. <laughs> um, you should be able to find me, or you can send me uh, an email at uh, pbtarot7 at gmail.com, or you could, I guess, uh, put that into YouTube, and it would bring you to my page, probably. So that's pbtarot7, T-A-R-O-T, the number 7, at gmail.com. And again, like I said, you could just follow me on Facebook and uh, hit any of those videos of any of the readings or the unboxings that I've done. And uh, you'll uh, get to the page. Please like, share, subscribe. If you don't do YouTube, share here on Facebook. Tell your friends. And uh I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share these messages and to um, talk to you guys and get your feedback. And hopefully these messages are edifying. I know they are. I know they are. I know they are. You know, and like I said, sometimes if it doesn't resonate with one person, it'll resonate with someone else or it might resonate later. This is the beauty of having these video recordings. Back in the day, you go to a reader, you had to take a pen, a pencil, write stuff down, or, you know, ask, could you put on a cassette tape? And most of them were like, no, you know. So this is really a, a, a really fortunate for the younger people that they have access to this. And, again, these are things that uh, will always be there, hopefully, and everybody can uh, access. So I will uh, – be talking to you all later. Thanks so much for joining me, and I appreciate it. Um, pull up. I'm gonna. I I actually. I think I did post that song. Um, he ain't heavy. He's my brother on my timeline. But um, if I didn't, be sure to um, go to YouTube and put it in the uh, search and uh, 
listen to it and and really listen to those words it's, it's wonderful okay so i'll be talking to you guys soon i love you all thank you so much for joining me and if i'm if i'm not back this evening i'll do capricorn what time did i start this around an hour ago okay it's 10 30. okay so all right tomorrow night is there's is two what is it tomorrow night whatever night it is <laughs> i'll try to be here at night i know i can't do it on friday but um i i think i could be able to do it tomorrow okay so if i don't come if i come back tonight it won't be to do capricorn's reading i'll do capricorn tomorrow at nine o'clock so tell your friends i'll make an appointment and if I can't make it for some reason, I will let you all know. So tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, I'll do the reading for Capricorn for the year for 2018. All right? Okay, everybody. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, have a Merry Christmas. All you Sagittarius, have a great birthday. And I'll be seeing you guys soon. All right? And thank you so much. And I'll be talking to you all later. Bye. Mm-hmm. Me and my problems with electronics. <laughs> Bye.